What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one, the only Ash Said It, ashsaidit.com. This is the Ash Said It daily podcast show. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for your support, for your love. We are nearly, we are on the heels of half a million streams worldwide. Would not be possible without each and every one of you guys, your shares, your likes, your comments, all the posting that you do about the show. I thank you, I thank you, I thank you. It gives me the great opportunity to talk to some folks, some pretty important folks, some some folks, some locals to the ATL area. I am here with, oh my goodness, I, I'm looking at this man's resume, y'all, and I'm running out of room. I'm trying to go through everything. <laughs> Singer, songwriter, actor, choreographer, educator, entrepreneur, H3, the artist. What's up, H3? What's going on, Ash? <laughs> <laughs> You just, it's just, it's so much. It, I, I, I'm trying to keep up with everything. I, you didn't add stuff to the doggone resume. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Running out of room. Running out of room. Hey, I appreciate that build up. Thank you for having me on your platform. It's Aww. really an honor. Thank you so much. Thank you for being on time, you know. No, appreciate <laughs> well, that. I'm, I'm, try, I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. All right, H. Zeus, let everybody know where are you from? Where do you represent? Woo! I am born. I was born and raised in Albany, Georgia, and um, I've been up here in Atlanta for uh, 17 years, probably right at 18 years. So. Wow! Wow! Yep. wow. So that good life city, Albany. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All day, all day. Where did the name come from? H three. Well, you know, my name is Herb. You know, and of course, that's where the H is. The three is I sing, dance, act. So you know, people are like, oh man, you're triple threat. You're triple threat. So I started off there. I do more than that. But um, that's just the you know the basics. Age three, and it, you know it just represents exponential growth because I am a very big um, artsy fartsy kind of guy. I love the arts. And I'm always trying to better myself in those genres. You okay. know, age three, baby. Age yeah. three. Yeah. What pulled you to the entertainment world? Always been around it. Um, mom was really really big with uh, expression. She was very dramatic, and I remember sitting in front of the TV set. When I was like maybe seven, eight years old, and I would see fame, and I would see uh, the Motown 25 review, see Michael Jackson, see Steven Wonder, see all these performers on stage. It just ignited my soul, and I have been, I haven't been right since. <laughs> I was like, okay, whatever that is, I want to be that. I want to do that. That's it, you know. So. <laughs> Yeah, it, it was it was planted in me a long, long time. And, you know, my sisters, they play uh, classical music, contemporary music, things like that. So it was always around mm-hmm. that. And I, when I say classical piano and clarinet, so just a very musical family. Which art form took charge of you first? Uh, I would say, ooh, that's a good question, um, playing drums. Because I was really playing the drums uh, at four years old. So mm-hmm. music. Music. So mm-hmm. after, so it was drums, and I started getting really interested in piano, and then that segued into writing songs. Because once I learned how to actually um, play the, the the tunes that I heard in my head, then naturally I wanted to sing over it or put lyrics over it to carry thought. And it just kind of evolved from that. And then once I did that, and I started, you know, chore- you know, uh, putting dance moves to it, you know, based on things that I was seeing and things that I was inspired with. Just start starting to move, and then when I started moving with it, I was like, "Well, I want to make sure that I'm um, expressing the emotion correctly." So the acting portion of it started to kick in. So it, it just it's funneled from all of that, you know. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. So music was my first. Music was <laughs> yeah. first. From yeah. the music realm of things, jumping into choreography, what were yeah. some of the challenges that you faced? Let's see. I, learning the challenge. I think the biggest one was that crossover period because. You always, as an artist, you're, you're figuring out, okay, finding out your niche, finding out what actually resonates with you based on what you've been um, influenced by, and then figuring out how that actually can be um, received by everyone else. Because it's like, you may be inspired by something externally, then when you take it and you make it your own, then you have the, t- the task of putting it back out there and seeing how people are going to um, receive your interpretation of it. So figuring out how to take what you see, make it your own, and represent it in a way that's fresh and, and new, so to speak, and to kind of see where it is against the standard. Mm-hmm. That little area, now that was a challenge for me because, you know, I came in, like let's say for dancing, right? I came down from 
you know, Albany, Georgia. So we did a lot of dirty style punk dancing, big movement, you know, ha, 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 drop that, drop that, drop that. You know, we, I mean, we give it to you, baby. You know, uh, <laughs> then coming up here to Atlanta, the style changed a yeah. lot. Yeah. So the way that I was used to, it went from being real big to kind of being more smooth and more symmetrical and all of those type of things. So, you know, you have to continuously stay in a learning mode. So making that transition, this is what I feel, this is what I want to present. Now let me see what's the best way to present that in a way that the people can receive it. Mm. Yeah. When did you realize that people were watching you and were definitely inspired by what you were doing and respected your craft? Oh, my God. Dude. As you asked some of the best questions ever. <laughs> that, you know, it, it started for me back in, like, grade school. Mm. Um, with, with amongst my peers, when people would come up to you and they would just say how much that performance meant to them, mm. you know, that's what gave us, you know, the the impetus and the encouragement to say, you know, we might be on to something, we might be on to something, you know, and we just, just kind of dug in our heels a little bit more, some of us more than others, and just continued to say, you know what, I think I, I want this. Because when you're doing something that you love and, and you get love back from people, yeah. doing what you do naturally, that's a great feeling. And mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's what most people want. We want to feel appreciated for what we're actually expressing, you know, and that's mm-hmm. important. So that all the way back in grade school, that like, I didn't have a whole lot of talk game in the beginning. Mm-hmm. All I would do is get out there on the dance floor and I would dance. And if I could dance a girl into giving me her number, <laughs> which I did, <laughs> that, that was proof positive to me. I was like, I think I got something. <laughs> <laughs> and then once I got a number, then I would sing to her over the phone. So I was like, oh, I got it. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you just showcasing all, all these, you know, these charismatic <laughs> skills. And I mean, yeah. this, the, the acting comes hand in hand with that. What was your first big, um, oh my gosh, you're a trip. Ace three is a fool, y'all. He is an absolute beast on the dance floor. He will have your behind laughing everywhere that you go. We need to get you your own show. That that needs to be next. I can't with you. I, I, you better speak that thing into existence. Speak it out. It's coming. It ain't even a question. Ash said it, so it must be true. It must be true. Come on. I love it. Oh, Was the acting a natural transition for you as well? It, it was. Um, I got bit by the book because I went to Florida a and University. So mm-hmm. um, my first, the role that I that I got that made me, that where I was bit, and I was like, oh, this is just wonderful. I was on a, a production called On Toby Time. It was an off-Broadway um, thing. Like a gentleman who had wrote it was trying to shop around. So, of course, he went to um, one of the HBCUs, Sam U, and he was, you know, practicing and testing out his material. So I got the lead role of a character named John Duck. And John Duck was a vaudeville performer who was trying to make it big into New York. And he was also the the rallying force of all the other performers. And whenever they would get down in the dumps and they were going through Tin Pan Alley and all these kinds of things, John Duck was the guy Mm -hmm. who just brought them together and, and helped them to continue to believe in their dreams. And that resonated with me. Like, that was a role... I, I've never done anything to that magnitude in acting before, but that was like my first opportunity, and I nailed it. It was great. I had great mentorship, and that was it. It was over. I was like, okay, this is wonderful. So I was singing. I was dancing. I was acting. That, I think that probably was where the, the triple threat really presented itself to me mm-hmm. because I, in a musical, I had to do all, yeah. all things. And mm-hmm. that was my moment. Boom. As a seasoned veteran now, with all this stuff mm-hmm. on you, I mean, you're like I said, the resume, like it's it's still spilling over. I'm I'm finding stuff that I, did, yeah. I didn't know was there before H three. With all this experience yeah. under your belt, what do you know now that you wish you had known when you had started? I I wish I would have known exactly how potent my art really was, mm-hmm. um, because I was just so in love with the fact that I was in love with. It. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just, oh, it, it was like a love affair. And it was just, it was, that in and of itself was its own reward. But once I was able to move the mist and say, you know what, this is not just a love affair, but this is a business. Like, you actually can eat off of this. Like, you can really, like, go in and brand yourself and do something um, of service and something that you are so passionate about and so organic 
that's so organic to your nature that this could be your life, not just some dream or some hobby off in the in the yonder. No, this is your life. This is a part of your anatomy, dude. Like I, I would have I would have stopped daydreaming about the life I was living. You know, mm-hmm. I would have just said, This is me. And I would have mm-hmm. I would have made some other decisions, some more more grounded decisions, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and not treated it so much like a hobby that I was just really good at. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah. Definitely. So I, I, I paid for that with and with blood. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, you know, and I think we all become a little bit more wiser as we, we go through these lessons that, you know, we're like, mm, I wish I didn't have to go through that, but right. we had to go through it in order to be at the place that you're at today. So... You know, we take it with a grain of salt. You've got so much just credit to your name as far as the industry goes with movies, television features. Mm-hmm. Your theatrical debut was in... Uh, Boycott. Okay. Uh, which was an HBO original series with Martin Luther King. Jeffrey Wright was playing a part of Martin Luther King. If I'm not mistaken, Terrence Howard was playing a part of Ralph the Abernathy, mm-hmm. I believe. And uh, it was it was excellent. We shot here in Atlanta. And I was just an extra on the wall. That was my first theatrical debut. I'm just one of the homeboys sitting on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> then hey. shortly after that, I did drum line. And so I was on the um, Atlanta A&T line mm. playing the drums, you know, because that's, that's what I come from right there on Nick Cannon's team. And then a few you know, years later, I was in Stump Yard. So, oh. yeah, because I started chasing it up in Atlanta. I was like, okay, something is brewing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> something is cooking up. Everybody that's jumping it, in. Hollywood, hey, as they we, say. We, we <laughs> ATL would, as they like to call us sometimes. With your skills as a choreographer, seeing uh-huh. yourself on TV, seeing yourself in these music videos, how did it make uh-huh. your loved ones feel and your family? Very proud. You know, it, again, I'm 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 the only one in my nuclear family that's pushing the envelope like this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We've all a musically inclined, but you know, I'm the one that's just like, hey, you know, I just want to explore this rabbit hole to the fullest. But they've been very proud, and, um, you know, but it's always that question, okay, how you going to eat, thanks, how you going to mm-hmm. eat, mama, just, mama, dad, I got to keep doing it, got to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they're excited, you know, when they see all of the time that they took me to lessons and allowed me to go dancing in the yard, and when they see these things manifesting, of course, you know, they're like, okay, good job, good job, you know, so I, I appreciate them for that. What advice would you offer to any person We'll even say any young person right now that's listening that they have a talent or something that they want to expound on, but maybe they don't have that confidence up. Going back to what I was saying, just first of all, believe in yourself and know that if you got a talent, it's not on accident. And your talent, that's pretty much, that's your call. That's mm-hmm. your that's your business. That's, that's your destiny. It's just, it's just peeking its head through the things that you like. Don't play it down. And be careful about the people that you're around. Get around people that are truly, that got your best interest at heart so they can build you up. Mm-hmm. Because if you're around the wrong individuals and they're doubtful in and of themselves and they can't see your, your beauty, they can't affirm the things that you know are mm. good about yourself, it can throw you off. Mm. And then you'll acquiesce to trying to please them instead of really hearing what your spirit and what your soul is telling you to do. Mm. So, you know. You know, you have to believe in yourself, believe in those the, that, that inner drive, know that it is real, it's not an accident, and you can be as good as you bring yourself to be, you just have to apply yourself, and then get around people who believe in you, if not the same, more than you do, mm. and then just, and, and let that be your click, and then just go in, because there's, there's no better time than now to figure out who you are and what you want, and go in. That's it. Mm. That's preach, it. preach. Say it, eight three. Say it. Tell them how it is. <laughs> and, and I want to say this last piece. I know we're about to wrap up, but, you know, my my group, Trigger Run Production, back in the day, I was a part of a group, TRP, we call it the TRP for short, um, phenomenal dance group, phenomenal musicians, just a great group of guys. But um, a lot of us, we have conversations, some of us now, about things that we could have did differently that would have changed the rest of our lives. And it's exactly, if, if my older self could have spoke to my younger self, I would have said exactly what I did. Because mm-hmm. we were doing everything, and we didn't even know how on track we were. We would start our own clothing line. We were producing our own music. We were winning talent shows. We were doing our own choreography. We were doing everything that a conglomerate was supposed to do. And we were doing it because we wanted to, and we were having fun. 
Mm-hmm. And then we just stopped. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, so we had those conversations now. We're kicking ourselves in the butt, but it's a lesson learned. And so hopefully that will, you know, maybe what I've just shared will keep a generation of other young um, potentials and cre- creators from making the same mistake. Definitely. H3, the artist. H3, let everybody know how they can get in contact with you. Yo, okay. H3, the artist. Instagram, exactly. It's H3 underscore the artist, and that's on Instagram, and H3 underscore the artist on Facebook. That's pretty much it. That's it. And um, and we definitely respond back to you in real time. So, yay. Sounds like a plan. That's H3. <laughs> Thank you so much for passing through. I know you got a tight schedule. You know what I'm saying? You on to the next stop of the day. So we're going to let you gotcha. go on and get to it. But uh, we definitely thank you for coming through and blessing us thank with some, you, some kind words, some good words, some words of motivation, positive energy, good vibes always. I uh, I really appreciate thank each you. and every one of you guys for supporting the movement and for downloading my shows. Thank you so very much. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. That's right. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history right. books. Social media is nice, but real life is so much better. Until next time.